Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be talking with some incredible female photographers. We have Gabriella, Vika, Christina, and myself, Zoe. Um, I'll do a little intro about uh, my work and who I am. Um, I am originally from England, uh, have lived in Berlin for 12 years. Um, I didn't study photography, so I came to it actually relatively late in life in my 30s and um, picked up a camera and fell in love and realized that this was something that I wanted to spend my life doing. Um, so yeah, since picking up that camera, I took a really long journey to get to where I am, tried lots of different kinds of photography and discovered portrait photography and really fell even more in love. Um, being able to connect with other people and share their stories in a visual way was uh, a wonderful thing. So I've been doing that for maybe 12 years now um, and uh, talking about the things we're going to talk to about today are really important to me. Representing women in a positive way and uh, showcasing such incredible series like Mika is doing um, is so important and yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you all about it. Christina? I'm also really excited and happy to be here to have a chance to discuss this very important subject uh, on women breaking boundaries and representing women and female bodies and um, subjects like that. I do also portraiture work. Um, I also came to photography a bit later in life. And um, yeah, I think connecting with my subjects is also really, really important to me and sharing their stories. Sometimes it can be something quite vulnerable or intimate and getting them to trust me yeah, is really important. And the subjects that I usually share, um, I have an intention to uh, change the audience perception or perspective on certain issues. So that's an important thing that I find. Um, it's very, you know, for any artist, I think it's something that we can um, can use because we have that voice, that uh, the chance to show to a wider audience some important things that people may not see. So that's that's what I find important in my work, and I'm sure. Um, everyone else feels a very similar way about that. I'm Gabriela Demchuk. Um, I'm also very excited and happy to be here mm -hmm. among these beautiful, wonderful photographers. Um, I came to London about a year and a half ago. Before that, I was working as a photographer, journalist, portrait photographer in Washington, DC um, for about 10 years, uh, where I was covering a lot of politics, um, as a member of the White House press, traveling with the president, um, and then also covering um, the Capitol and Congress. Um, and then outside of Washington, I was working on stories around the country related to immigration um, and the environment. And at the time, what was really important uh, for myself was to try to connect what was happening in Washington um, to communities around the country, trying to show how the policies that were coming out of Washington were affecting communities, were, infecting, were affecting the environment um, and, and our bodies. And so, um, so yeah, so I was looking at, at these, these issues and then moved here to, to London for my master's um, where I wanted to expand my practice more spatially. Um, so I, I just finished my master's at the uh, at Goldsmiths um, in research architecture. And so I'm now trying to understand and figure out how does one um, visualize spaces? How does one um, look at the body within a space? Um, and yeah, just taking my visual practice from there. Uh, hi, my name is Vika and actually my, uh, my, my story is not as long because uh, I'm 22 years old and I came to London when I was 19. So now I'm graduating LCC uh, in photography and actually like working with uh, 
with uh, with femininity and uh, and the and, and body is uh, is kind of new topic to me. But that's what I picked for my uh, final major project, and that's what I'm doing. So um, I was collaborating with these four uh, elderly women from Poland in the age of 63 to 70, 73, and uh, we were working. Um, you know, we're focusing on this idea of like breaking stereotypes about about, about uh, aging and you know female body while and while aging and uh, yes yeah, so I'm kind of new new into that but um, what I do mostly is uh, photography and film and like art directing so yeah I'm, I'm really hoping to hear some some new great information from you maybe hopefully learn something <laughs> new. Awesome. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> since, yeah, sure. since you're the last one. Um, so, since you mentioned that you were working with these four older women from Poland, yeah. during while you were working, you probably were communicating with them and interviewing them, um, yeah. getting their feedback on their understanding of their own body, their own beauty, things like that. Do you find after living, after having lived here for three years, do you find any difference between the perception of female body, maybe specifically all the female body in Poland versus the UK? Uh, Do they need to break more boundaries? Is there any more pressure on them or the other way around? Uh, yes, definitely. You know, we have, in Poland we have this like, I don't know if it's a stereotype, but people tend to say like, what my neighbor is going to think, like what mm -hmm. other people going to think. Mm -hmm. So in my, during my interview, so I conducted a series of interviews in December. I was traveling by my car to, to four different cities. And interviewing them and then i came back again in march to make actual photo shoot photo shoots with my crew but in december when i was interviewing them uh miss eva uh, who's a, who's one of the, of the of the ladies was even saying like comparing us to germany for example and she was saying like in germany for example it's so normal and like uh and common for uh, for people to like get undressed for example on the beach and she was comparing us to them saying like uh like on uh, on the beach, like if seventy years old woman was wearing just a bikini, it's not you know it's, it's not a big thing, it's just a bikini. But if if she was wearing a bikini, a lot of people would say like it's inappropriate. She's showing too much. Like wow. she's not like you know young enough to be doing that things, right. which is like shocking because to be honest, if you're like, what is the difference? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know if. If you see like a young girl wearing a bikini at the beach, does it surprise you? Of course not. Of course it doesn't surprise you. So I think like it should be just equal, you know, because like some some more wrinkles doesn't make you that different. If that makes sense, yeah. So so I see um, so I see the um, differences between like uh, I don't know about London to be honest. I think um, I think I would like compare London more to to Germany as well, or like uh, Scandinavia, where people where people just like are more um, used to nudity. I don't I don't think it's a thing in Poland. Like it's it's normal when you're like 60, 70 that you should actually be covered. And you know like it's even in fashion. You know the the babushka style when they like put everything. Mm -hmm. It's because it's because like you know women should be covered. You know and yeah. and yeah, we're just trying to like break it down. Yeah, I guess the the thing in my head as it breaks is we are quite prudish. You know, we don't generally want to show our skin. Um, and I, I think I do see a lot in summer, guys will take their tops off, right? And they're walking with no top. And if a woman was, I mean, we can't, we can't take any, any our tops off. We can't do that. Um, and, you know, our bodies are the same, but I was a sexualized, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we can't do the same things that men can do, but it's infuriating for sure. And interestingly in Germany and Poland, how close they are it, they're, they're sharing a border and the different attitudes between, you know, nudity. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Where do you think that comes from? Is that religion? Mm -hmm. or? That's that's actually a good question. And I think I, I should deep it. No, I just think it's like, hmm, how to even, how to even explain that. Yeah. I think maybe it's also coming from the church. Maybe I should like, uh, I should point it on a church. Because uh, like Poland is Catholic country, uh, yeah. most of my country is Catholic, and you know it's it has been it's been like that for for hundreds of years. Uh, people just you, you know women had to be like covered, like had to not not be showing too much. Um, so I think it's just like uh, you know it's how to say it, rooted yeah. into into our society. Now it's actually changing. I think now it's changing, and now we have like women 
like uh, like myself or others or like you know people who I, who I was working with but this is this is not common it was not easy to find this woman every time when I was asking someone if they could help me finding you know people with like my parents or like my my grandfather or whoever everyone was like they actually want to do it like wow. uh, this is actually kind of crazy I don't know if I can find you anyone like that you know so so it's not that easy to still yeah. find that type of uh, people they were kind of brave I, I would have to say that yeah. these women were, were really brave yeah yeah do you think your generation, your friends, your classmates, you react to all the women expressing themselves more sort of acceptingly, mm -hmm. like easily? Um, I think so. And that's why I did my work, you know, because like yeah. when I'll be 70 years old, I want to wear a bikini. Yeah, and like, yeah, you know, all right. and, and, if I want to, and if I want to make myself a photo shoot like that, I just want to be like, you know, able to do it. And that's also the reason why I, why I was doing this. So I, I genuinely think so. I think that my generation is just like more, more open to almost anything. I don't think that there's like a, many things which, which can shock us, like deeply yeah. shock us, you know, because uh, obviously the internet and, and everything, we just like kind of uh, used to it. However, I was when I was showing um, that work to, to people from like uh, Lithuania, for example, mm -hmm. in my uni, they still like reacted like, whoa, mm -hmm. what did you do? Okay, this is controversial. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I, I see also the, like, uh, the differences between um, responses from like people mm -hmm. from uh, more Western Europe and mm -hmm. like Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. still, which was interesting for me. Yeah. How did you... Sorry. No. <laughs> no, I was just wondering, how did you eventually find these women and what did they think about the project when you, you talked to them about it? So um, so two of them I found in a, in a video clip of uh, Maria Peszek, who is uh, one of my favorite Polish artists. She's uh, she's feminist and she like she makes this cool you know video clips about like body and it's really controversial. Her like video clips you can see like for example uh, older two men in a Polish village kissing like you could never see. I've literally right. never mm. seen like an imaginary like this. So uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so um, so that's where I found them and I just thought like it's worth a shot to just like asking them if these women would like to be a part yeah. of my project too. And they agreed, and, and and they wanted to do it. So I was uh, I was really glad about that. And then two of them, um, one of them is my auntie, and fourth is like uh, my family's uh, friend, or you know. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, what did they they think about the project when you uh, to them? So I think you know it's really like sensitive topic, especially mm -hmm. for someone who is like seventy plus to mm -hmm. actually just like get undressed. But I was straightforward with them. Uh, from the very beginning and I think that to make this type of uh, of work we needed a time to like get to know each other and I needed the time to like build a trust that I don't don't will like use them in like you know an appropriate way so that's why to do it I I, I aim to like spend some some proper time with them you know that's why mm -hmm. that's why me and my girls were like just like uh, cooking with them and you know talking a lot we were even drinking with some of them then <laughs> so we, we were like that trust and after that um after once we, we build that trust it was mm -hmm. more like a like a fun time you know yeah. like all together making makeup and hair yeah. like it was just fun it was just like a wholesome time to yeah. spend and during the photo shoot, it wasn't like a like strict photo shoot, like okay we're doing like photos from like one to three but we had like a proper day together and like in the yeah. meantime we were also like eating mm -hmm. we were watching films together that was really mm -hmm. sweet that sounds amazing yeah, do you have a relationship with them after? Do you still keep in touch? Or? Yes, yes, we actually Aww. chat, chat from, awesome. from time to time, yeah. yeah that's so cool. <laughs> do you think you will continue working on this, either this project or something may come out of it, like working with? You know, some people were telling me, uh, were asking me if it would be possible uh, if to, to make Photoshop like that of uh, their grandmothers or like yeah, they know yeah, someone yeah. to make it. Right. And someone told me that, uh, yesterday during the, the graduation exhibition to make like a calendars with, the, uh, oh, with oh, these wow. ladies. Oh, yeah. And uh, and the ladies actually got gassed about getting calendars, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> with, with one lady on like uh, eight for, for each month. So I was thinking about that and... Um, yeah, but it's not sure. It was just like you know, easy idea. Well, we need more representation out there, right? Like series like this are so important because we women are basically invisible after the age of forty. Yes. After I guess our reproductive, you know, fertility is gone, we're almost useless, and we have no representation. So 
series like this are so incredibly important because it shows other women that we can be whoever we want to be. We can look and dress exactly like we want to and have wrinkles and be not a size zero and be a different color and all of that. So thank you for doing something that obviously took a lot of work and you put your heart into it. And you can see that. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. That's, yeah. that's so nice. Yeah, they taught me a lot. And you know what was the best? Because you know how people are like being uh, scared that, oh, you should live your life when you're 20, you should go out, you should do this. Mm -hmm. you, you know, like we're being constantly scared that it's gonna finish. And that, right. I think that's why so yeah. many people are scared of like aging and also like they're scared of death or like scared of life and like life passing yeah. because we're constantly being told this is gonna finish. Mm -hmm. Now you feel good, now you're strong, now you're beautiful and it's gonna end. Yeah. And I, I was one of these people, you know, and each of these ladies literally told me, like, Vika, you're going to see, like, I genuinely feel the most confident now. Yeah, and awesome. it's going to just get better. But they were telling me, like, you got to work on that because, like, confidence doesn't also just, like, you know, no. happen. No, yeah. you should work on that. You should, like, think about yourself. So that was really refreshing, you know? That yeah, was really, yeah. I think that's the, mm, to say, it, like, the most powerful uh, message which they, which yes. they conveyed yeah. to me. I also had a similar kind of revelation with one of the women I photographed in my project. There's also beauty that features women with disabilities and just coming from different backgrounds, also different ages. And one of them, um, I think she's in her 50s, if I'm not mistaken, and her hair is all gray. And she told me that she actually didn't feel herself until her hair started turning gray. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then, like, she, she said, like, when I was younger, and she was beautiful, she even worked as a model, and she and she said, like, I still didn't feel comfortable in my own body, I didn't like it, and it was also quite shocking when you think, like, oh, when you see someone beautiful, when you see a professional fashion model, you think, well, they are happy with their body, while everyone else is yeah. just, you know, constantly feel ashamed of something mm -hmm. in themselves, because we're conditioned to feel that way. Um, and then you feel someone say, no, I didn't feel comfortable at all. Yeah. I, I, she felt maybe more mature this mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. And then until she, her hair started turning gray, then she kind of finally found herself. Yeah. That was also quite yeah. a revelation well, for me. That's yeah. why I stopped dyeing my hair. Because like, I, I was going gray in my 20s. And you are told you're, you have to dye your hair. You cannot show signs of aging. You cannot. You have to look young at all times. And then it's yeah. in my 30s, and I'm just thinking, this is madness. You know, why why don't I just see what is under here and shaved it all off, started again. And now I could not imagine dying it because it's it's my kind of visual representation that I do not care what anyone else tells me and how I'm meant to live my life. And I hope more women can kind of embrace that and yeah. realize that you know it, it's not going to come in a bottle it's not going to come in you know all of these things that we're sold it comes from within um and I'm, I'm really hopeful of the younger generations because i think yeah you guys have that that strength you you look at what's happening around you and you kind of go i'm rejecting that which is really inspiring so i have a lot of hope you know i hope that women your age do not care what anyone tells them to look like or do and just live authentically. Mm -hmm. So, and embrace their uniqueness. Yes. Yeah. And try yeah. fit in certain standards yes. or follow whatever Instagram trends. Yeah. Western yeah. standards as yeah. well. Yeah, Western standards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hope so too. <laughs> and, uh, maybe just to change the subject, I wanted to hear everyone's opinion. Yeah. Uh, in terms of being a female artist in today's world, um, do you think you need to possess certain qualities to succeed as a female photographer, a female artist, uh, break certain boundaries, anything from your experience that you've encountered or, yeah, any thoughts on that? I mean, everyone's on their own journey. So, you know, we're all, we're all different people and and there is no one way to get to where you want to get to. Um, what worked for me was really honing in on what I was passionate about. If I could just give any advice to anyone out there, it would be,
Do not look at what anyone else is doing. Don't pay attention to anyone else. Go inside and really, really think about what you love as a creative and what makes you excited and what you want to, how you want to leave your mark, right? With your art and your creativity. Um, and I wasted so many years in this industry trying to be someone else that I wasn't, you know, trying to replicate someone else. And as soon as I realized that what makes you unique that is actually what's going to set you apart. That's where you're going to get the jobs, the work. Um, you know, add on top of that as a female photographer, some of the stuff is not in our control. Who's, who's you know, the, the, the clients who are looking at different portfolios, if they're looking at male portfolios, female portfolios, why do they make decisions? That's not in our control. So you almost have to put blinkers on, do your work, and I know... I know so many incredible female photographers. You know, people should be so lucky to have female photographers working on their projects, working for their brands, do, do, because we, we work damn hard. To get to where we are, it took us a lot to get to where we are. And I think that makes us extra special. Um, but yeah, I don't know about you guys. Do you, what do you think? Very what about you? Yeah. Words. I mean, I hope so. But I mean, Gabriella, you you worked. I mean, you know, photographing the president. You are surrounded mm -hmm. by suits, guys, mm -hmm. by other very, by other male photographers. Yeah, well. who I'm sure are jostling and you know pushing and and how do you cope? How do you yeah. deal with that? Yeah, I mean, I think when I first started, there were moments when I was the only woman. Wow. Um, with other photographers, and it's all all male photographers. Um, I think there's been recently more of a push to get more women into um, <clears throat> photojournalism and and more into politics and, and Washington, um, covering the president, covering um, the Capitol. Um, and so by the time I left, there were more around me. Um, but I think in those moments, it's really important to also find other women that you can talk to, um, other women who've perhaps experienced the same things as you, um, that, yeah, you can sort of just, just share your stories um, and, and let you know that, like, no, this this isn't okay, or no, this is how you get through this. This is how you should respond to this. Yeah. Um, and I think there have been women older than me that I've been able to talk to about this, who've gone through it themselves. And so it's been a, a way of navigating these spaces. Um, and then also just of, of, of trying to also um, bring people, bring other women um, together and, and support one another. Um, and really, really push to, to open um, opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like the younger generation of um, editors, art directors, commissioning people, yeah. they really do understand mm -hmm. the yes. importance of bringing in that female gaze yeah. mm. into the conversation. And they really push for yeah. hiring more mm. women. Yeah. And I'm really happy for that, especially in the past, like, in five years, I can really see the shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also been a lot of really great work that groups like Women Photograph, yeah. Diversify, Authority Collective, like they've really been pushing to to make those changes happen and, and realizing that it's not just photographers, but it's at every level. Yeah. It is the editors, the art directors, um, people at the on the masthead mm -hmm. of all these places yeah. that that need to be thinking more about. Who are the voices that are, are working on these stories? And a lot of it as well can be you believing in yourself and your value. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have women messaging me saying, you know, I don't think I can charge this for this job. And I'm telling them, you can. Yeah. Do you think a man is ever questioning whether he can charge this much for a job or saying, I can't do this? Never. But obviously we are conditioned to doubt ourselves, not believe in ourselves, put ourselves in a box, mm -hmm. and we have to deprogram and believe that we are just as capable yeah. as anyone else in the room. We can do it absolutely hands down. 
Um, so it's, it's trying to yeah, support women. I think you're right. When you can have that community of other women around you who are lifting you mm -hmm. up, you can do anything. Yeah. yeah. And also sharing whatever, you know, information. Yes. For example, people sometimes can be, you know, quite uncomfortable talking about rates. Mm. Yes. And like, if anyone asks me how much would you charge for this, like another female you know, photographer would definitely say like, Yes, this, you can easily yeah. charge this or that. Totally. It's, yeah. Otherwise, how would you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Transparency is is key yeah. because for too long it's all hidden behind closed doors, and you are second guessing what you can charge. And groups like women uh, women photographers mm -hmm. and um, in Berlin there's a female photo club, and I can't tell you how incredible it is to have just other women creatives to talk to. Um, and there are great guys out there, but nothing beats no, talking to someone who is going through exactly what you're going through, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> what are your future goals when you graduate? Yeah. 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 You, can okay. I actually add something to the question which you yeah. asked? So I know it might be like a little bit like different from like what was your experience, but because um, because I think that I'm just coming from a different um I don't know if I can say generation, but I was born pretty early. You know, I was born in 2001. And to be honest with you, as, as far as I'm just starting, I'm going to be honest, like I'm just starting still. But as far as I've been like noticing, I don't really see um, that much of a difference. And I truly want to believe that as long your work is good and solid and you're confident about your work, I think that there, there's like not really much difference or like there should not be difference with the, yeah. the, between like pace because the work at the end is the mm -hmm. is the work so as far what what, what was i experiencing this is just my experiences i don't really see much difference between like me and my male friends who i you know work with or study yeah. with but maybe well i i think so uh that just the word like is changing you know and uh, yeah. and people like you guys you, you've made the change I think so. So, um, so from my point of view, for, for now we kind of like equal, but maybe That's That's you know. Really I yeah. hope I will not encounter like any yeah. any type of problem like that. Yes. Uh, like in uh, like this type of problem. So, uh, yes. So for now it's kind of equal. Sorry. What you said was very important to say. As long as you're confident, mm. yeah. That's been statistically right. a problem that a lot yeah. of graduates, uh, <laughs> female photography graduates. Yeah. Don't go into photography no. or go into assisting or editing or doing something else, but not becoming photographers yeah. just because they lack that confidence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That's so yeah. we should stay confident. Believe <laughs> in yourself. And yeah, hopefully your generation will. Make that I think it is really. Yes, you're right. You're right. As long as you're confident, you can actually achieve that. And I think that's. Really, I see what you're talking about yeah. um, in terms of that of that support from like uh, other women because like when I was working on that project now, uh, I've uh, I will, I've been working only with uh, with girls. But to be honest, I didn't think about any like at, at the beginning I didn't think about anything else except uh, um, like the comfort zone, you know, for my participants because they were supposed to get undressed. I just wanted them to you know feel yeah. comfortable, obviously. But then like we just ended up working with like uh, in, in talks with like. 10 or 11 girls and that felt like that built such like a wholesome and like you know safe yeah. space no one was actually um like uh, ashamed of anything yeah. it built like a really nice uh, nice environment you, you, yeah so I, I understand i understand as well what would you say and there's there's a um a account and a website uh, called a photo editor i don't know if you guys have seen yes. it, who shares all of the um right now he's doing a series on salaries so photographers are approaching him with their salaries and laying out the full transparency, how much they earn, how much they, you know, net. Um, and it is shocking because there, there is, there is a, a large disparity definitely between male and female photographers still. And it gives me hope that your generation are, I hope, changing that. And I think, like you said, the more transparent, the better mm -hmm. and the more information we have better so if you ever need you know a photo editor is the account to you know he's so helpful as well um because that's what we need we need as photographers as well we're kind of like almost we leave university and then we're just kind of thrown out the nest yeah. left to fend for ourselves we don't get really a lot of business skills we don't we're not taught a lot of that stuff either mm -hmm. um 
so it's quite an unusual industry in that way whereas i know my friends who are graphic designers and illustrators uh they get a lot more of this kind of training up to run a business and i think a lot of photographers they don't want to think it's a business mm -hmm. but it is but a it business is. Yeah. it is a business you've got to pay your bills yeah. um so yeah the more you the more we talk to each other yeah the better yeah. peer support is yes. very important while so, you're a student you have your classmates yeah. you have your community mm -hmm. yes but once you graduate yeah. You just by yourself. Yeah, I yeah, was actually yeah. thinking about it that for the first time. You know, when you're a student, you belong to something. Like when when you're a kid, you belong uh, to, to like school, to to uni. And now yeah. it's just like I'm just by myself, and this right. is like completely up to me if I'm gonna if I'm gonna create like myself a community for the first time in yeah. my life. You know, so yeah, yeah I see what you're, what you're talking about. I'm really glad to speak with you, <laughs> with you guys about yeah. it today. Yeah, got Thank you back. Going <laughs> on what, what you had said about how lack of confidence sort of pulls us out of the industry or as, or as photographers. Um, I think another thing too is that as we get older, our priorities change. And for some of us, we want to start families and have kids. And I've spoke to women who, who don't even tell their editors that they're pregnant yeah. because they're fearful that yeah. they won't get work anymore that they'll have kids and it will either sidetrack them, they won't be able to focus on their business um, or editors just won't, won't call them. Yeah. Um, so I think as women, we also, we have, there's so much more that we have to, to, to deal with really. Yeah. Take and, into account. Yeah. I mean, and that's a, I know that's a project that, that you've been working on. Yeah. I mean, so this project, which is called We Are Child Free, it's, um, sharing stories from women who don't want children, um, whether that's through choice, through circumstances, uh, because life is complicated. And, you know, this issue of when, if, if, when women want children, they are taken out of the workforce. They lose whole chunks of money yeah. because they are raising the next generation and they're not compensated for it they you know we expect so much from women we expect them to put their careers on hold um, and as freelancers you know there's not much of a safety net as well if you don't mm -hmm. have a lot of savings and and if you want a child it's how do you how do you you know deal mm -hmm. with that and and prepare yourselves and then have to deal with the editors mm -hmm. and magazines who yeah it is it's it's a real worry for people how, how they navigate this and this obviously comes from patriarchy and the structures and the systems that we still deal with to this day um so yeah i think until until our society actually reckons with these systems and starts breaking them down we will always be second place because we are going to have the children we, unless men are having them they're not going to be affected in this way men actually earn more money when we have children we earn less money so how does that happen? Men get the uh, paternity bump and we get a, a dip in our income. Yeah. How, how, you know? So it's really speaking to so many women all around the world about why they chose not to have children. Um, this was a factor that kept coming up was, I am still treated like a second class citizen. And when I, if I had a child, that is going to be even more difficult um and i think until we start yeah talking about it and and sharing you know sharing our stories because a lot of this is still quite hidden you know we don't really talk a lot about it and what's happening in the world with roe versus wade and, mm. and women's rights are being rolled back yeah. um we made so much progression and then all of a sudden it's it's going backwards and i don't know about you guys like what do you think about do you get scared about what's happening right now with with everything politically and Vika for you but with yeah this is horrible because I actually want to, I think it's a good time to like mention it because in yeah. Poland at the moment like a few years ago we had this uh, this law which just came into um, we had this new law of like uh, the legalization of abortion completely yeah. and we had like, a lot of strikes so it's like millions of people protesting but yeah. it's still like it's it still happens so now in poland it's like illegal to get an abortion yeah. or like for example when you go to pharmacy they have a legal choice to to decide that um that they don't want to sell you um 
Well, how is it? Uh, how is it called in English? Like when you take pills? Morning after pill. No, no, no this is pills. illegal too. Yeah. But like contraceptive. Uh, oh yeah. Co- yeah, contraceptive. contraceptive. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot the word. Contraceptive uh, yeah. pills. They have legal choice to say like, no, sorry, because because mm. uh, yeah. my heart is telling me that I should not sell you this, yeah. so I will not say that. This is actually yeah. happening in the twenty first yeah. century. Yeah. When I was here and I was just having this uh, talk with my uh, with my friends uh, about like getting pregnant at our age, uh, I. Uh, we're talking about like getting abortion in my head it was like uh, you know as a polish as a polish woman it's an option to go like to czech czech republic yeah. or uh, or you know sweden um it's it's not a poland and i was talking about it with uh, with my friends and they were like but what you mean like you're, you're in the uk you can just do it and that was so like random to me that yeah. i can do it i forgot i was like oh i actually can do it this is right. this is crazy when in poland it's, it's illegal and i can actually go to jail for doing that yeah. or oh, we had this, like huge problems uh, with like doctors if uh, if if women if women um body is put in danger danger while while giving a labor yeah. uh, yeah, did I say it right? Yes. Yeah. We're giving an over, sorry. And um, in some cases, uh, yes, if her, if her body is put in in a da- in a danger, in some cases it's it's still illegal to get an abortion even right. then. So they so they literally have to sacrifice mother's life to mm-hmm. save the the kid's life. Mm-hmm. And it's happening in its twenty first century, yeah. and, and we're in European yeah. Union. You know, it's, it's happening. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's happening in America now. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. the rollback of Roe v. Wade, you have every state now gets to decide how they want to basically control women's bodies. Yeah. Um, and so you have much more conservative states that are, are doing exactly that, where yeah. they're telling you, oh, if you don't feel comfortable like giving contraception, then you don't have to. Ridiculous. And and yeah, and then basically legalizing any form of abortion. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, and it, it's the same. And so, I mean, when I did the, when I started this project, I started it out of frustration because I was so angry that people would constantly tell me I was going to, I didn't know who I was. I changed my mind. Um, Then I had problems with medical professionals. Then when I launched the, the project, women would send me their stories saying they were not able to get things like tubal ligations. Men can get vasectomies, no problem. Women are not allowed in so many places to have abortion, tubal ligations. We still don't own our own bodies. And and this is in, like you said, relatively progressive countries. In Germany, it's the same. Legally, we can have abortions, but there are still loopholes that we have to jump through. We have, we need to see counselors. There is a a timeline on when we can do it. Um, I've had women message me saying, it's easier for me to fly out to the UK than have it in Germany. Yeah. Which is, how is this possible? So, you know, what's happening in, in progressive places, so-called progressive places like America and Germany, it's going to start happening in the UK. Mm-hmm. What's happening with Roe versus Wade is going to trickle down mm-hmm. worldwide. And we have, as women, we have to do everything we can to fight against these powers that you said, exactly, Gabrielle, it's control. Mm-hmm. It's all just about controlling our bodies and controlling what we do and we need you know we need women like us and and series like we're doing to show the world that we get to decide what we do with our bodies and how we look and and how we can you know empower other people but it's scary it is scary yeah yeah i totally agree we need to reclaim our bodies (laughs) yeah uh regain our confidence as well and share with, with as many other women as possible yes you don't have to listen to anyone. Yeah, there's, there's no one to tell you what to do, what to look like, yeah. what to do with your body. And, yeah, that's, I mean, we have we have the ability. Like, we're not politicians, but we still have yeah, loud voices. voices. Exactly. And following on Instagram, on social media, and uh, you know, if, if some major publications would like to share, like your project, for example. Like that's that's a real that's a real opportunity. That's yeah. what really we can do. Because there is power when we can actually talk to each other and connect with each other. Yeah. Then we are unstoppable. Because actually, what you know, governments want is women to be afraid and be silenced and be trapped. And when we can band together and support each other, and you know, that's when we can actually make a change. But it also requires men 
to support us. We're not alone in this. Re our reproductive responsibilities, it's not just us. It takes two people to tango, right? So, you know, I'm really grateful that there are guys out there who are doing the work and, it, you know, telling the world that it's not just, it's not just us. We should not be doing this and fighting for this ourselves. And like when I see people protesting in Poland and I see men, women, everyone is out there, um, you know, it, it gives me hope, but it's, it's scary when governments like that are determined to control our bodies. Yeah. Unfortunately, still a lot of governments are dominated by men. Mm -hmm. True. So that's another yeah. big issue. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we will also empower other women to maybe go more into politics or activism or yeah. things like that. that it's, you know, you can do it as a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's a, it's a movement that has to happen at every level. Yeah. So not just yeah. at the political level, but it's the state, the yeah. local um, schools, education, also photography, journalism, editorial, like all of these things help mm -hmm. to like really push a movement forward. Yeah. yeah. That has to be done at, at every, every level. And being able to give women who do want children support because mm -hmm. the, that's what I see is that when when women do have kids, they are just left to you know in America there is no maternity. No, no. How you know it's ridiculous. And there's then, no, there's nothing like that. No. We I mean we have maternity leave based on where you're working. So if yeah. you're working for a private organization, mm -hmm. they might have it in their contract that you get X amount of time um, off when you mm -hmm. have a child, but. Again, it's just really at the whim of yeah. every every business. Yeah. So there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it costs a lot of money yeah. as well. So if you're a freelancer, it's like yeah. yeah. I mean you don't have your your own boss. And so yeah. having to figure out can you take time off when you when you have a yeah. baby? So it really just depends. Bills to pay and yeah. 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 I had a colleague um, when I was working teaching in New York who was also a teacher and she I don't know, I didn't count the day specifically, but it felt like just a couple of weeks she came back um, wow. with a baby, would mm -hmm. give a baby to some of the staff and go teach a class, which is a three hour mm -hmm. class, yeah. Yeah. and go back nursing mm -hmm. baby, it's crazy. and go teach yeah. again. Whew, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, really, I, I hope we can change things like that, you know? Um, but I think we're running out of time, guys, I think. <laughs> I think we could have talked for hours, right? <laughs> could have talked about so many topics, but yeah. thank you so much for yeah be, being who you are and working on these projects. Like it means so much that we get to yeah be able to connect with each other and hopefully inspire yeah. other women to get out there and photograph what you want to photograph and don't let anyone tell you no. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet the younger generation oh as well. And, yeah. It's very Thanks, inspiring Brian. and very it's really, yeah. It's really like uh, it's really powerful to to meet you guys, you know, for, and to actually hear someone, you know, a little bit a little bit older than, than me because obviously I'm I'm on a daily basis surrounded by people my age, so it's right. really like refreshing also to hear someone more um uh professional. <laughs> yes. so, yeah, thank you. Oh, it was an honor, it was real honor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Talking to you all. Thank, Thank you. you so much.